We welcome you into Baton Rouge. Those of you just joining us, Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck with you. Alabama off to a hot start in their second meeting with the Tigers. They came out, started three for four from behind the arc. And that's similar to the first time these two teams met. At the half, it was Alabama that was up by one. They've gotten off to a quick start. Now, how can they maintain that through four quarters? LSU won the first meeting back on January 18th. They beat Alabama by 20 points. Alabama actually led by one at the half. Yeah, it was all keyed on Aliyah Nye. She had, she had 18 points in that first half. That's number 32 in pink. Flage Johnson for three, no. And this will be Alabama ball. But both of these teams we were talking, they're different than that first meeting. I know it hasn't been that long ago, but we're seeing differences and improvement on both sides. Well, the strength of the two teams, for LSU, it's in the paint. For Alabama, it's their perimeter shooting. Here's Anissa Morrow looking for her first points. Won't get him there. Sarah Ashley Barker on the move. Carly Weathers needing help. Loyal McQueen, and it bounces off of a foot of Anissa Morrow. Morrow will take a seat. Aliyah Del Rosario checks in for LSU. Angel Reese was heading the other direction. She's got to get back on defense. There's Aliyah Nye. She has had 23 points in each of their last two games. Their leading three-point shooter has hit 82 threes, shooting 43% from behind the arc. Alabama changed up their defense. They've gone zone because they know LSU's trying to get the ball in the paint. Poa trying to feed it into Del Rosario, and she throws it away up ahead to McQueen. They can't finish. Rotation defensively for Alabama has been spot on. They're making it really hard on LSU in the paint. Aliyah Nye got it. Six points for Nye. She's hit two threes. Now Alabama changed their defense again. They wipe off the bucket. LSU will get to inbound this. The foul is on Essence Cody, her first. In Alabama's last game against Tennessee, they were able to really take off in the third quarter because they went about it defensively, changing things up. Tennessee never knew, were they in man or in zone, and could never get in a rhythm offensively. Last year, Pola with the bucket. The assist to Angel Reese. Angel Reese is so smart on the floor. She knows where to get the ball to if the option is not there for her. Look, and Angel Reese has talked about it. She knew that Anissa Morrow was coming in this year to join the roster. She said, maybe my rebounding numbers are going to be down, but I can still get the ball to my teammates. So her assist numbers are up. Look, she looked, she helped to recruit Anissa Morrow here to Baton Rouge. There she throws it away to Nye, but it's poked away by Michaela Williams. This is a player that knows where everyone's going to be. Just the tip right back to last year, Poa. Perfect. Cody can shoot it. You can't sleep on number 21 in pink. The freshman, she may have size, but she's got three-point range. This is McDonald's All-American coming out of high school, true freshman. It's going to be the fourth turnover by LSU.
And Kim Mulkey, when they played Vanderbilt, she knew that Vanderbilt was going to be a team that changed up their defenses. And she said, just run your stuff. It doesn't matter man or zone. And that's what LSU's got to do today against Alabama. Carly Weathers waiting in the corner. That's been a great spot for Alabama. They have hit three three-pointers from that spot today. It's getting beat off penetration. The defense sinks into the paint, and the three-point shooter is locked and ready. Poa throws it up. Offensive foul on last tier Poa. Didn't you feel like Alabama, when they came in to shoot around this morning, they were focused and very confident because they knew what kind of environment they were coming into today and they have really carried out their game plan. Yeah, it's really a game plan specific shoot around that Christy Curry and her staff put together. More like a walkthrough. They're not taped up. They're just in sweats, not really going, not going full speed at all, but talking through the scouting report. It's worked for this group. They've won their last four games. The turnaround is it good for Gianna Cunningham. If LSU can't guard the dribble, dribble drive, this could be a long night for the Tigers. Largest lead for Alabama. Del Rosario didn't even need a dribble. He's a reset too small. She gave the symbol. Del Rosario didn't have yeah. to. Aliyah Del Rosario is a freshman who is getting more and more playing time as they trust her more. She's learning more. Well, I've seen just throughout the season, Del Rosario has gotten in great shape as well. Alabama's going to get this back. Jessica Timmons, the transfer from NC State, pulls it out. LSU ball. Yeah, the quick hands of Flage Johnson. And that's the first foul against Sarah Ashley Barker. It was it was Flage Johnson in the first meeting that Kim Mulkey challenged to step up defensively in the second half. She's got to do that a lot earlier today. And they allowed Aliyah Nye, who was guarded by Flage Johnson, have 18 points in that first half. And then Flage just shut her down. She didn't score at all in the second half. So that foul puts them in the bonus. So Flage Johnson will go to the free throw line. Up and in for Flage. Well, Thursday at 7 Eastern, 6 Central over on ESPN, the only undefeated team in the nation. Top ranked South Carolina will take on the Lady Vols of Tennessee and Knoxville. Be a good night for women's soup. South Carolina getting a nice win over UConn today, 83 to 65. And that was without Camila Cardoso, who's playing with her national team right now. South Carolina didn't look like they missed a beat without Cardoso. It helps when a Tahina Pow Pow comes out and, you know, hits five three-pointers. But Chloe Kitt, Ashley Watkins, they really held it down inside for the Gamecocks. Uh, four players and double figures for South Carolina, who now has six wins against ranked opponents. Haley Van Lip, no. Anissa Morrow looking for her first points. Morrow enters this game needing six points for 2,000 in her career. Catch that, Courtney. I, I'm in heels. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to reel that in to protect me like you do when we're in the car. If I was. <laughs> <laughs> I usually drive. There has been a hand that's been thrown out just to protect Peck every once in a while. Not because of my driving. No. <laughs> Nye up the front of the iron. Angel Reese arguing it's a jump ball. They're going to whistle a foul on Angel. That'll be her first. Oh, I don't think, I think that's a jump ball. Yeah. Both players had their hands on the basketball. I didn't see a foul. Instead, they're going to whistle that against Angel Reese. Inbound to Timmons. Ball Kick to the corner tonight. Waiting. You cannot let her sit and cook. 
so pretty how Alabama moves the basketball. That's how offense should be played. Aliyah Nye has already hit three three-pointers. That's a good sign for the Crimson Tide. Plus, it Johnson has her shot blocked. The official said that wasn't I, good. I think the clock froze. I think or, it did, too. Yeah, that was the longest point one seconds I have seen. Yeah, it stopped. Uh, it did. So they're going to go over to the monitor. The call on the floor is that the clock stopped and the basket is no good. That play is under review. So while they take a look at that, we'll go ahead and step aside here. Alabama up 23 to 14 after 10 minutes here in Baton Rouge. After looking at that last play again, the shot by Angel Reese did not count. So our score 23 to 14. Right now, the three ball has been good to Alabama. They've hit six of them. How are they getting those open looks? Well, LSU's getting in over rotation. You're going to watch Haley Van Lip commit to up going for the steal. And then when it comes to Carly Weathers, you see Morrow, she rotates up. And look at how far that Flaje Johnson has to come. That's just too far to get to Aliyah Nye. And if you give her that much time, she's going to make you pay. Aliyah Nye has started this game three for five from behind the arc. Nye, a player that is fourth in the nation in made threes per game. She averages just over three made threes a game. So she's right there through the first quarter. Well, Alabama is shooting 50% from the three-point line. And a lot of it has to start with on-ball defense. LSU has got to be accountable in keeping your player in front because if not, they're going to penetrate in and Nye's going to be sitting right there wide open. This is so interesting. Alabama actually shoots for a better percentage from the field and from three when they're playing on the road. Well, in, instead of just packing their defense, they pack their three-point shot. It's a full lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Thermos included. Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck with you from Baton Rouge, LSU. Hosting Alabama's second meeting between these two. LSU won the first one back in January by 20. Essence Cody trying to get in on the fun. Reese working on Cody, and she draws the foul. Nobody gets to the free throw line more than Angel Reese, and I think I just saw her contact pop out. These players. My eyesight's find still it? pretty good. I mean, from over here. Did you see it? I, I did not see the contact. I wear contacts and I still couldn't see that. So while they clean that up, uh, it's time for today's Need to Know. It's brought to you by the USPS Ground Advantage. According to Charlie Cream, Alabama with a win today, they would rise to a number nine seed. LSU, if they were to lose to Alabama, they fall to a four seed with the loss. They're currently a three seed in the tournament. And look for LSU to make it, try to make a run right now and play through Angel Reese. I can only imagine that Kim Mulkey in that last time or in the break between the first and second quarter talked about got to get Angel Reese touches. Of course you do. She averages 19 points and 12 rebounds a game. Get her the basketball. Well, in that first, in that first quarter, a lot of perimeter shots were taken by LSU. Was that something that Alabama's defense was forcing? I think the guards for LSU were settling for jumpers. Is that, Alabama's challenging off the bounce. Hey, Loyal McQueen's going to get herself to the free throw line. That foul is on Haley Van Lith, her first. You can tell Alabama's game plan is Challenge the defense, challenge the perimeter of LSU on the dribble. If you can get deep enough to cause two to guard one, you can make things happen. Yeah, 
And looking for Angel Reese. Morrow throws it up, but just a little too far out in front of her. It'll be turnover number six by LSU. Last year, Polo replaces Haley Van Liff. LSU shooting just 28% from the field. Because if they're not getting shots in the paint, they've turned the ball over. There goes Anissa Morrow. Her first points, now four points away from 2000 in her career. Yeah, Morrow is as effective on the defensive end as she is offensive. Six steals against Vanderbilt. Tomorrow's anticipation. If you get your hands up, good things can happen. The steal score for the Tigers. Ali and I off the inbound. Rebound by Reese. You see Angel Reese talking to her point guard. Just being patient, let her get set, then you gotta get the ball inside. Bajay Johnson trying to elevate. No, she has not hit a field goal today. And Sarah Ashley Barker stepped out of bounds. Delgene Williams checks in, replacing Loyal McQueen for Alabama. And they whistle Aaliyah Nye for a blocking foul. That's her second. And Michaela Williams. She was trying to get into the path of Williams. She didn't get there. That's a good call. So Nye's going to take a seat, too. LSU starting 0 for 6 from 3. Now, I don't have a problem with LSU taking perimeter shots, just not the contested ones. Carly Weathers, an open look. Rebound by Morrow. Pola inside to Reese. The spin and to the free throw line. Fouled by Cunningham. Yeah, because when Angel Reese gets the basketball, more times than not, she's going to finish or she's going to get herself to the free throw line. And it doesn't matter if it's single coverage, double team or a triple team, Reese can make things happen. First up and in, Monday night, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific here on ESPN2 Arizona. We'll take on the nation's second leading scorer, Juju Watkins, a front runner for National Freshman of the Year and the 10th ranked Trojans from the Galen Center in Los Angeles. Watkins, you know, Pac, your freshman year, you come in, you average 27 and a half points per game. Hey, she is worth the price of admission. Put up 51 in a game at Stanford. Look at Reese working through a double team, but can't finish. Got her own rebound. And back to her favorite place, the free throw line. She's got to be the hardest player to keep off the offensive glass because even after she misses her own shot, she does not stop working, continues to pursue the basketball. She has had 56 straight games of double figure points. This was a third foul on Gianna Cunningham. Oh, 
Angel Reese trying to be just the sixth player since 2010 with back-to-back -back seasons averaging 19 points and 12 rebounds a game. Okay, now LSU is going with a small lineup. Anissa Morrow is at the five. The other four players are all perimeter guards. Well, Alabama has got Essence Cody and Gianna Cunningham on the bench with two fouls apiece. A couple of their bigger players. SA has it stripped. Blage short on the land. And it's Crimson Tide ball. Oh, and you can't afford a foul right there. Flage, I think a little frustration that she missed that layup. It's the first on Flage Johnson. Now with this guard lineup for both teams, they're all the same size, going to see a lot of switching. Everybody except for Anissa Morrow. Jessica Timmons, the bucket and the damage. See, Morrow didn't know whether to stay or go. She gets there late on Timmons and co commits that foul. That's the second on Anissa Morrow, so she will take a seat. <laughs> Jessica Timmons coming off 14 points against Tennessee. She was 6 of 10 from the field in that game. Alabama gets the ball back. The rebound by Sarah Ashley Barker. Van Lift. Yes. First points for Haley Van Lift. Van Lentz turned up her defensive intensity. Loyal McQueen by herself. Rebound by Reese, up to nine rebounds for Angel Reese. Eight points to go along with it. Nine rebounds in, just in the first half. Simmons from deep. Seven three-pointers for Alabama. I don't think they want to go in the locker room at halftime. Flaje Johnson's going to beat him in transition on the other end. But you can't trade twos for threes. You got to find a way to stop the three-point shot from the Crimson Tide. Weathers had an open look at it. Yeah, Kim Mulkey wanted a double dribble, but Flaje Johnson deflected the ball. Van Lith is short. Oh, she's had a lot of missed shots right at the basket. They have. They've got to finish when they get the ball inside. I think Sarah Ashley Barker knew that was going in, held the follow through in the air. As she was turning headed the other That's direction. Right. <laughs> Largest lead for the Tide. First bucket for SA. <laughs> Naomi Jones whistled for her first foul. The threes popping on the road for Alabama. Sarah Ashley Barker crushes it. They've been eight three pointers to start this game. At the half. Uh, ladies, they definitely packed their three-point shot in their bag from Tuscaloosa to Baton Rouge. You mentioned it, the eight three-pointers. Their season high, by the way, is 15. They've had double-figure threes five times this year. They're on track for that, just two away. Well, here's the problem. Yeah, you got Alabama shooting 50% from the three-point line. Well, LSU is only shooting 50% on layups. They're 7 of 14. They've got to finish those buckets that are close in. Yeah, they've had some easy looks, but haven't been able to capitalize.
Hawks. Both free throws good for Haley Van Liff. Alabama has led by as many as 11. LSU's largest lead has been just one point. And LSU changed up to a zone defense. This is a good move. It stopped the penetration off the bounce from Alabama. Six seconds for the Tide. Timmons off to the left. And the change worked. Empty possession for Alabama. That was a good move by Kim Mulkey to change, break the rhythm of Alabama. We saw Alabama do that early in the first quarter. They threw a bunch of different defenses at LSU. Did it in their last game against Tennessee as well. All right, Angel Reese, that's how you get a double-double. Her 15th double-double of the season. She's ninth in the nation in that category. Leonai is on the bench, one of their best three-point shooters for Alabama. Well, she's got two fouls, her and Essence Cody, both with two fouls on the bench for the Tide. <laughs> Reese has it swiped away by Williams. Lori McQueen is in the corner. It's been her favorite spot. She's hit two freeze threes from there. And Williams misses at the top of the key. <laughs> Michaela Williams has some free throws coming. <laughs> Got to play through number 10 in white, Angel Reese. Give her the basketball and let her go to work. Especially when the lane is open. Clear out, give her space, because with this lineup, there's not too many people that can match up with number 10. Projected to be a top 10 pick in the WNBA draft if she decides to come out. She can return to LSU. I think Angel Reese at the next level has got to develop a fit, more of a face-up game. She doesn't have to use it against LSU, but that's what she's going to have to prove she has if she decides to go on to the WNBA. Michaela Williams got her own rebound. Leah Nye back in the game. With two fouls, she's in the corner, number 32 in pink at the bottom of your screen. Jessica Timmons dropped in and then hopped out. Jones with the offensive rebound. There's the second foul on last year, Poa. Naomi Jones, a freshman out of Jackson, Alabama, at the free throw line. This is the first. So our next big Monday doubleheader starts in the ACC. Kyle Filipowski, ninth-ranked Duke, hosts Wake Forest at Cameron Indoor, 7 Eastern. That one is followed by fourth-ranked Kansas and number 23, Texas Tech, in a Big 12 clash in Lubbock. Both games also available on ESPN and the app. Alabama has led the majority of this first half. They've had the lead for 18 minutes. Well, she's been trying to climb back. It's been the defense that's been so impressive from Alabama to go along with that three-point shooting. Timmons coming off the screen, crushed it. She's up to eight.
Tennessee. Alabama is able to just switch guard to guard. And I think it's going to be an offensive foul on Janae Ken. So tricky on that dribble handoff. The offensive player, you got to get set. You're moving. As the defender's moving, yeah, that's a foul. How many times does Sarah Ashley Barker end up on the floor? I was just thinking that. <laughs> I mean, she Several. Is, she's not afraid to mix things up. On the shot, she's getting inside for the offensive glass. She ain't afraid to battle. She's their leading scorer, but only has three points today. It's the other things that she does. It doesn't have to just show up in the score column of what she contributes for the Tide. If there was a column of hitting the deck, she would have lit it up today. She's hustle been on plays. the floor several times. Yeah. Yeah. You she, need a hustle play call. You do. On that stat sheet. Give him that extra effort. Just blue collar. Check. Number three in pink. Started her career at Georgia. Now in her second season at Alabama, she can come back for another year as well. I was looking at her numbers from last year. She averaged 4.5 points per game up to 16.9. Michaela Williams. Alabama can take the last shot of the half. They have led by as many as 11 today. Loyal McQueen gets the bounce to go on the road. And Alabama is going to take a 10-point lead into the locker room, the largest deficit that LSU has faced at the half this season. And Alabama off the bounce. They won that first half because they were able to attack LSU's defense. Alabama's hit eight three-pointers. They go into the locker room with a 10-point lead. Let's get you back to the studio with Christine Andrea. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. We're in Baton Rouge. Number 13, LSU down at the half by 10 to Alabama in their second meeting against the Crimson Tide this season. Welcome back inside the PMAC. Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck with you. And what did you notice? We've talked about LSU's defense, how it's improved, but they've struggled to stop the three ball from Alabama today. Well, what Alabama did is they said they were going to try, they were going to test LSU and see how they could defend off the bounce. And when Alabama was able to get inside, a rule of defenses don't help off the ball side. You saw Haley Van Lip do it, Flage Johnson did it, and that resulted in threes. And if you're late, helping on penetration, you've got to take away the straight line drive because that's exactly where Alabama's going. It'll be interesting to see the adjustment from LSU in this second half. Okay, really interesting. The first meeting, Alabama led by a point at the half. Today, they lead by 10 at the half. LSU ended up winning that first meeting by 20 points. So we have seen the Tigers make the adjustment. Well, I'm sure that it was quite heated in the locker room no. from LSU. And you Kim think? Mulkey is going to challenge her team to bring it defensively in this second half. Last year, Poa is going to take the three. Rebound by Aliyah Nye. And Poa got the starting nod instead of Haley Van Lip coming out of the, in the third. You like the move? We'll see, because Poa is a defender. Anissa Morrow in and out. Poa is there for the rebound and the putback. She's got six. Look at LSU going to extend the pressure going in the full court to not allow Alabama get into their offense. And a timeout here. The pressure too much. Alabama still up early on. Oh, this game important for both teams. Alabama, a win puts them as a nine seed. If LSU were to lose, they would fall to a four seed with a loss, according to Charlie Green. 
LSU, of course, the defending national champions. They forced Alabama into calling an early timeout here in the third quarter with the pressure they've applied. And Poa with the steal. Swatted away by Essence Cody, but she fouls last tier Poa, and already LSU is getting the benefits of Poa starting over Haley Van Lith in the third quarter. The conversation in the locker room at halftime was to turn it up defensively. That is why last tier Poa came out and started this third quarter because of what she brings on the defensive side of the ball. And that's the third foul on Essence Cody. That's big size inside for Alabama it's to contend with Angel Reese and Anissa Morrow on the glass. Seven points for Poa. And the pressure continues. Jessica Timmons lowered that shoulder, and that's going to be an offensive foul. 27th charge taken by last tier Poa. Angel Reese off the screen, a switch on Poa. She establishes legal guarding position and sacrifices her body right there to draw the charge. Angel Reese and Haley Van Lith, they went to last year POA a couple of games ago and said, we need you. We need you to be that aggressor that you are in practice as Angel finishes in the paint. Already has her double-double, got it in the first half. It is going to be on the defensive end for LSU. Carly Weathers, no. And LSU, a totally different team out of the locker room. You can see the fire and energy in this group. Thrown away into the hands of Loyal McQueen. I believe in the first half, LSU missed shots and it affected them on the defensive side. And for Ken Mulkey, your game should start with defense. They called it on last tier Poa. That would be her third. If anybody, that should have been on the Kayla Williams. Yeah. And Angel Reese gesturing to the student section to get louder. And I think we have a clock issue. Well, the clock started before the ball was inbounded, so they put 30 seconds back on the shot clock. Now Alabama bringing some full court pressure of their own. LSU going to a horn set. And yeah, they're looking to post up Williams. Feel like she's got a size advantage. And Aaliyah Nye already had those two fouls. She just picked up her third. So that's Aaliyah Nye and Essence Cody, both with three fouls for Alabama. Now, does Christy Curry trust her senior to leave her in the game? with those three fouls. Nye keeps checking the bench, but Curry isn't sending anybody. Oh, yes, she is. Well, Essence Cody is still out there, too, with, two, with three fouls. You've got a lead right now. Now it's a matter, do you want to gamble? Michaela Williams hits them both. So Aaliyah Nye takes his seat. Essence Cody, 21 in pink, is still on the floor with three fouls for Alabama.
Cody top of the key. Isaiah Johnson too much with the dribble. Last year, Poa did a great job. Remember, she's got three fouls, did not pick up her fourth on that play. Fourteen points, fourteen rebounds for Angel Reese. And LSU has cut it to one. Angel Reese, 14 points, 14 rebounds. She's helping LSU come back. Of those 14 rebounds, six of them have been on the offensive end. She has tracked the ball and been able to go after it. She knows where it needs to be. She takes it upon herself to be a leader for this team, knew she had to turn it up, and LSU has done that at the beginning of this third quarter. Angel Reese, her 15th double-double of the season, 66th of her career. Important review that they just went over. Last year, Poa only has two fouls now. They accidentally gave her her third. It actually goes to Michaela Williams. So it's Michaela Williams with two. Last year, Poa with two. LSU wants a travel called on Timmons. Oh, yeah, she got away with one there. Alabama dealing with some foul trouble. Both Essence Cody and Aaliyah Nye have three fouls apiece, and they are, Cody's on the bench, Nye on the floor. Possession arrow to Alabama. LSU trailed by 10 at the half. They have turned up the effort and intensity. They started full court pressing and trapping. They've outscored Alabama 10 to one in the third quarter. And Alabama 0 for three from three in this quarter. They were shooting 56% from three at the half. Swiped by Morrow. And Angel Reese hit the deck hard, trying to dive for that ball out of bounds. I love last year, Poe. She's the first one running down to help Angel Reese up. That's last what you need from your point guard. There's a rebound to be had. Angel Reese is going after it. Off the inbounds. LSU back on top. Kim Mulkey with a huge fist pump. After that play. Oh, you love it after you score and then you cause a five second call on the inbounds, you know your team is locked in. Again, she's been challenging this team all year with their defense. The offense has not been the question mark. It's been about that defensive intensity and they felt like the last two games entering today, they had found their rhythm. And it's not just technique, it's effort. And that's what Kim Mulkey has wanted from her team is effort on the defensive end. LSU with its first lead since it was four to three in this ball game. Michaela Williams! Make it an 8-0 run. The LSU switching all the ball screens now instead of trying to hedge and help. Alabama still has only scored one point in the third quarter. When Michaela Williams rejects this ball screen, that one dribble to the baseline pull up is pure. Several different recruiting outlets have Michaela Williams listed as the number one freshman in her class. She is the two time Louisiana Gatorade Player of the Year. Reese is one of the hardest players to defend because she shoots the ball so unorthodox 
that you, how do you get to it? I mean, that was a scoop underhand layup. You don't know if she's going to pull up for a regular jumper or flip it. And you don't know which hand she's going to shoot it with. She can shoot with her left hand. She can shoot with her right hand. Yeah, and I don't think she predetermines. I'm not sure she decides yeah. <laughs> to the last minute of which one she's going to use. This is a huge foul, though, because that is the fourth on Essence Cody, and now she has taken a seat for Alabama. Cody with no points, but her size down low is what they needed to go up against the size of LSU. Well, and if she doesn't get rebounds, Cody was responsible in trying to keep Angel Reese off the glass. It's a tough job. Alabama just gets it over in time. Aliyah Nye waiting. And the first three-pointer of the second half for Alabama, they have nine threes now. Their first made field goal of the second half. You've got to believe Alabama's thinking they let the game in Tuscaloosa get away from them. They led in the first half. Now LSU de delivering a punch. Can they sustain it? Haley Van Lith shot blocked by Naomi Jones. Simmons trying to Euro, and she's fouled by Michaela Williams. That'll be her third. Jones stepping in with Essence Cody being out, showing her defensive presence, and now it's Alabama coming full speed the other direction. Nine points now for Jessica Timmons. And she's in double figures for the 17th time this season. Alabama up by one. I'm impressed with Alabama so far. What would they be like coming out of the locker room? Could you handle that run you were expecting from LSU? It's been a battle. They've been outscored 15 to 6 here in the third quarter. Mauro Norris started with the defense for LSU. The intensity, the focus, they're locked in. And they get the takeaway. Michaela Williams fires. Boom! Offensive foul on Carly Weathers, and last Tirapoa takes her second charge of the game. What a difference maker for LSU. Last Tirapoa came out of the locker room, started this third quarter, and it was because of what she brings defensively. That was her 28th charge taken on the season. Looks a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> but Poet is a true point guard, and I think that if LSU wants to contend for another national championship, Poe is going to have to play. Del Rosario with the rebound back up to Poa. Williams to her post player misses. You're right, Courtney. Poa looks to be a little winded. But she is giving it 110% on both ends of the floor. The kick to the corner, Sarah Ashley Barker, her second three today. She's up to eight points. She's their leading scorer, averages 17 a game. This is the two from Williams. How did Morrow hit that? 
She's a bucket away from 2,000 points in her career. The way that Morrow and Reese get on the glass is just ridiculous. Cunningham with a turnaround in and out. seconds here and there's a foul underneath Anissa Morrow cut from the same cloth as Angel Reese getting on the offensive glass no quit is there in Anissa Morrow Anissa Morrow and Angel Reese this is a dangerous one-two punch 37% of LSU scoring 43% of their rebounding in two players that is amazing that's amazing for what these two players get done for their team. They're both on the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year watch list that just came out a few days ago. When Angel Reese was on her run last season with double doubles, Anissa Morrow was neck and neck when she was playing at DePaul. Next point for Morrow gives her 2,000 in her career. How fitting she could get it at the free throw line. Got it. Two grand, feeling fine. Largest lead here for LSU. Timmons is off. Look at Christy Curry said, why are we stagnant? They are stagnant because LSU is switching all dribble handoffs instead of you getting beat and have somebody have to commit. Ooh, that could have been a charge. Sarah Ashley Barker, another hustle play on the deck again. <laughs> she was right there when Angel Reese caught the basketball and turned to pivot. That may have been a little bit of an acting job. Tomorrow. Second chance. Poe is going to set things up with 15 seconds on the shot clock. That's what you need in your point guard. Get things organized. They got to go. Two seconds. And Flage Johnson is fouled. It'll be the second on Naomi Jones. Alabama dealing with some foul trouble. Essence Cody and Gianna Cunningham both have four fouls. Aliyah Nye with three. Flaje gets the first. Monday night, 9 Eastern here on ESPN2. Arizona facing Juju Watkins and number 10, USC. Hey, the Pac-12 ain't no joke. Oregon State's coming along. They were in a battle today with Colorado. The Pac-12 tournament? Mm. Ooh, buckle up. Let's see if I can get a trip to Vegas. <laughs> That'll be the third on last year pull up. Keep an eye on number 32, Aliyah Nye. They worked on that this morning. Nye in the corner. Blase Johnson covered it. Alabama has only scored nine points here in the third quarter. LSU has 26. Very similar to the last meeting. Swatted away by Angel Reese. Not in my house. And 
LSU can take the last shot of the quarter. They have outscored Alabama 28 to 9 in the third. Tack on two more. A 30 spot for the Tigers. The best move of the day. Kim Mulkey putting last year poem into the starting lineup in the third quarter, pushing in transition and turn up the defense and lift the Tigers right now on their own fire. Well, you see the pink on the court and in the stands. It's their play for K game. And this is a very important game for raising awareness for breast cancer research, especially for LSU associate head coach Bob Starkey. His wife, Sherry, was diagnosed with breast cancer back in June of 2007. It was stage one of an aggressive form of cancer, but they found it early thanks to early detection. And so Bob and his wife, Sherry, have been big advocates. She went through chemo, a double mastectomy. She's doing great now, but they're huge advocates and at how important it is to raise money for breast cancer research. And they have skin in the game. They are donating a dollar for every student tonight. And not only is Bob Starkey donating a dollar for each student, Fly J. Johnson's matching it. They did the same thing last season. Play for K, such an important initiative. We're so lucky our ESPN family is a part of it. Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck back with you here in Baton Rouge. LSU was shot out of a cannon out of the locker room at halftime. They trailed by 10. They outscored Alabama 30 to nine in the third quarter. Biggest difference in the third quarter? Starting last year, Poa, and bringing the defensive heat, went with a full court press. Lisa Morrow is gonna be whistled for her third foul. You can see with this LSU team, that they get enjoyment. They play with joy when their defense really turns up. Then that affects the offensive end. In the first half, they weren't making shots. They let the offense affect their defense. Total switch in the second half. Last year, Poa, a true point guard. As you mentioned, she got the start in the third quarter. She took two charges in the third quarter. Her defensive intensity also helping LSU. Now, she knows how to get the ball to Angel Reese, Poa does. It's a good strategy. Up ahead to Flage. Last touch by Alabama. This will stay with LSU. Important to note, Alabama is dealing with some foul trouble. Essence Cody is on the floor with four fouls. Gianna Cunningham has four fouls. Aliyah Nye on the floor right now with three. Morrow off the inbound, three-point play possible. Now over 2,000 points in her career. Just the muscle she positions on Sarah Ashley Barker and gets the two and the bonus trip to the free throw line. Royal McQueen sees an opening. Now, no lead is safe with how Alabama can shoot the three. Do you mean like that? Just like that. 11 three-pointers, that ends a 16-0 run by LSU. 
sixth time this season that Alabama has hit double-figure threes. But that may have been the toughest three, the toughest look Nye has had today. She's five of seven from deep. Off of Alabama, stays with the Tigers. Now, Poa is so good at getting the ball to Angel Reed. She, Angel Reese, she knows where to put it. Jump ball, possession arrow to Alabama. I don't know, my favorite assist tonight has been the one behind the back to Flage. That was sweet in transition, smooth. Now LSU was switching those interchanges, ball screens, dribble handoffs. That's the third foul on Flage Johnson. The defense, even the pressure has extended from LSU beyond the three-point line and getting over those ball screens. Loyal McQueen by herself. And Issa Morrow comes down with authority. Like, this is mine. Everyone get off. Well, it's not that nice. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> give me that. I watered it down for TV. <laughs> Nine points, eight rebounds for Morrow. Eight seconds. Alabama's got numbers. Nye to McQueen. Now LSU with numbers. Finish it, Flashe. the rebound, running in transition. Big folk with the finish. And that's the fourth on Aliyah Nye. Three point play. LSU calls a timeout under seven to go. A totally different half for Kim Mulkey's team. Thursday at 7 Eastern, 6 Central over on ESPN. The only undefeated team in the nation. Well, that would be South Carolina. They'll take on the Lady Balls of Tennessee in Knoxville. Should be a great night for women's hoops. We have been so impressed with last tier Poa. She got the starting nod out of the locker room in the third quarter and has made all the difference for LSU. They trailed by 10 going into the locker room. She's had her hands all over the place in this second half. Scooping up, getting steals, bringing it defensively. She's taken two charges today, and this is sweet, serving it up to Flage Johnson. I thought it was an excellent move by Kim Mulkey of starting last tier Poa in the second half, and she has carried, carried the mail. How do you describe the offense when last tier Poa is running the point compared to Haley Van Lith? Well, Poe is not looking for her opportunities to shoot the basketball. She'll look for scoring opportunities, but she's more concerned of getting the ball where Kim Mulkey wants it. Carly Weathers is rejected. rejected. They swing it around to Timmons for three. Two-plus minute scoring drought for Alabama. It's a lot easier to make threes when you got the lead, right? Your confidence is there, the bucket is huge. When you're chasing from behind, those shots get a little more difficult. Morrow, the dump off to Reese. Those two, scary. Yeah, the connection between Morrow and Reese, they read each other so well because they play so similar in getting into those open spots. 
That's like a Batman and Robin, but both of them wear capes. You would think, too, with the, them being such similar players, that maybe Angel Reese would be hesitant to have Anissa Morrow join the program, but that was not the case at all. When Morrow came on a recruiting visit, Angel was there and sat in her meeting and said, Anissa, we need you to come to LSU. I want to play with you. But you got to understand, Angel Reese wants to win, and she knows that Anissa Morrow, Morrow can help her do that. That's going to be the fifth foul on Essence Cody. And it happens on the screen. So Alabama is going to lose that size down low in 6 4 Essence Cody. No points for Cody today, but she does have four rebounds. Christy Curry is using every second of this substitution time. Well, they're asking the officials a question. I'm not sure. I think Christy Curry wants them to look at it. Just make sure that the right, the foul was assessed to the right person. We're going to check and make sure this last foul was on the right person. It's like you've played the, and coached in this game before. So are they going to call that on Carly, or are they going to call that on Essence Cody? Because if that's on Carly Weathers, then Essence Cody could stay in. After, re After review, the foul is on 21 for Alabama. Yeah, so they do call that on Essence Cody. That is her fifth, so she is done for the day. Naomi Jones is going to have to try to anchor the Alabama defense. It's number 31 in pink. Alabama had a 10-point lead at the half. That's been erased here in the second half as they have scored single digits in both quarters. Gave up 30 points in the third quarter. 25 points for Reese, 18 rebounds. Did you see how high into Reese got when she went up for that rebound over Skying everybody? It. Blocked by Paula. Up ahead to Reese. Back to Flage. Moving like a well oiled machine. It all starts with last year, Paula. She got the deflection defensively, and the Tigers off and running. Yeah, go to your All-American, Angel Reese. She's willing to share. Flage on the finish. Well, it is Black History Month, and we celebrate black history always. Last year, this was so cool to see. Finally, Simone Augustus with her statue, the first female student athlete at LSU with a statue. This was something that was really important to Kim Mulkey when she took the job at LSU. And rightfully so, Simone Augustus, a two-time National Player of the Year, went to the Final Four a handful of times, three times, and doing this all in her hometown. How cool is that? Uh, great pride that Simone Augustus had in playing here at LSU. And talk about the sweetest, smoothest mid-range jump shot. Simone Augustus had that. That ends a three and a half minute scoring drought for Alabama. And the biggest difference in the second half, the defense turned up and so were the turnovers for Alabama. And LSU capitalized on those. There are 20 points in the second half off turnovers for LSU. And you just know if you're being double teamed, if you're in East tomorrow, Angel Reese is somewhere open. <laughs> Just throw it up in the air. Yeah. Reese will go snatch it. She's like a vacuum. So 
there. Ashley Berger misses. And that's going to stay with Alabama as Carly Weathers threw it off of Angel Reese. It was real concerning for LSU with how easily Alabama was able to score in that first half. But the adjustments defensively for LSU, wow. Morrow just snatched that out of the air. LSU has made five of its last seven shots. Faget in the corner. Blows a kiss to the crowd. What do you think about the adjustments that LSU can make in the locker room and in one game so quickly? Well, Kim Mulkey has their attention. And she is very succinct, very direct in what she wants to happen. And she knows she can call on Angel Reese to get a job done, and Angel Reese will carry that through. Look at the difference. The first half, 31 points. They shot 31% from the field. Totally different second half. Well, and their defense just totally shut down Alabama. They weren't able to run the penetrating pitch like they did in the first half. Going full court pressure, switching on ball screens, accountability on ball, you could see the difference. Loyal McQueen makes it 13 made threes for Alabama. But both McQueen and Nye, the threes they've made, they at least this time have been contested. Look at Poa. <laughs> 11 points, six rebounds, four assists for last year Poa. That's a career high 11 points for her. Poe is going to get a break. Flaget Johnson last year, Poa and Michaela Williams take a seat. But Poa, I tell you, she was the player that has been the player of the game. Her impact in the second half has been huge. Only a nine for two. Angelica Velez sets it up here for LSU number one in white. And Kim Mulkey's still getting after it. She wants her team to play hard to the very end. Sarah Ashley Barker will take a seat for Alabama. 11 points, seven rebounds, two assists for SA. And how many four burns did she get today? She's gonna need an ice bath, but that's not different from any other game. Haley Van Lip with a bucket. She has six. The defense that LSU brought out of the locker room in the third quarter, they can maintain that for four quarters. This is a contending team. Because like you said, they can score at all five positions. And bringing in last year POA at that point position, they just got to consistently bring the defense. Cunningham.
LSU calls a timeout just to make a sub and bring in Amani Bartlett. Again, those two losses against South Carolina and Mississippi State back to back since then, they have turned up their defense. We saw in those last two wins, and now we're seeing that here in the second half. Uh, right now, holding Alabama to 63 points. They were averaging giving up 64 over those last two games. The difference for LSU is going to be how committed are they on the defensive end? This second half, very impressive. Ooh, no foul on that. Ooh. I heard that over here. And for Alabama, they've got to just take a look at what adjustments are you going to make when teams are switching on your interchanges. Now do you want to go less, less drives and more screen and slip action off the ball instead of trying to get everything done with the, with the ball handler? Well, I thought, too, it looked like LSU really got in their head immediately when they came out of halftime and they started full court pressing and trapping. And Christy Curry had to call that early timeout. Okay. How do you handle that pressure? Well, that's in preparation and practice. You got to understand when pressure, when you see pressure, what do you immediately get into? Not freelance and panic. Timmons will hit. That's 14 made threes, one off from Alabama's season high. The clock is stuck. Four players in double figures for LSU today including last year Poa with not just a season high, but a career high for her in 11 points. And the 11 points don't even tap the impact that she's had on this game today. She had control of the floor. She brought the defensive intensity and it really helps when it starts with your point guard. That's the top of your defense. It makes it easier on everybody else when your point guard does their job at the top of the defense. So they're still working on this clock issue. It stopped early, so now they've put 31.1 seconds. Want to let you know the first two top 16 reveal shows for the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament coming up this Thursday night at 6.30 Eastern right here on ESPN2. There's also going to be another one February 29th on ESPN2. First time that we're putting these together. That'll be fun to see what the selection committee is thinking. Every time I hear bracketology, all I can picture is Charlie Cream in the basement of his house like a mad scientist yes. going through all of these numbers. That's exactly what happens every day, <laughs> which is why we get an email at 430 in the morning. Did you notice that? Well, but he's, he's far west coast still. I'm not going to give Charlie a break. Charlie's the best. This is a tell of two halves for LSU. Kent misses. What a difference, the first 20 minutes of this game, the last 20 minutes. LSU faced its largest halftime deficit at 10 points. And then they just opened up. A can. In the second half. <laughs> 30 points in the third quarter, 24 here in the fourth. Angel Reese turned it up too. I mean, she's had a quite a night as well. 27 and 19. She might have worked a little overtime putting up those kind of numbers. Ball, 
It wasn't easy, but they will take it. An 85 to 66 win for LSU. They've won 21 games this season. They own the glass. They turned it up defensively in that second half. Now they're going to have to work on. They got to do it for four quarters next time out. Last year, Poa making a huge impact, getting the start out of the locker room. But LSU victorious at home inside the PMAC today over the Crimson Tide.